opportunity against Adelaide tomorrow. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, we love coming here. Um, it's our second home, so it's great to get back here and yeah, hopefully get that first win. What is it that you love about coming here so much? Oh, just we, it's just when we're here, we're so close as a group. We love travelling together. Um, the fans, our Hobart fans, are great. Um, we get great support up here and down here, and um, yeah, we just love it. Probably sick of being asked this, but do you feel like you're getting closer to that, that elusive win? I suppose every week you get out there. Yeah, 100%. Um, it might not look like it, but we're taking so many steps forward each week, and the results aren't coming at the moment. But we're making so much progress off field, and um, I'm sure you've heard it, but. At the club, it doesn't seem like we're 0 and 10. Um, the vibes are so good at the club, and the boys are really working hard to turn it around, and I'm sure it will soon. What's that last little cherry on top that the, the club needs to achieve in order to, to get that first win for the season? Yeah, it's just little things each week. Um, we prepare for every game the same way, but different to, depending on who we're playing. So we always look for little things that we can exploit from the opposition. So something like that, and then also just experience playing together. We are a young group, and um, every game that we play together is helping and we're definitely getting closer. Last week there were some positives to come out of the game, you weren't able to get the win, but are you hoping for a little bit more of a consistent game I'd say tomorrow? Yeah definitely, that's the thing we're searching for is a four quarter effort. Um, we showed it for two quarters, we won two quarters last week which, de which was definitely a step forward but we haven't been able to piece together a four quarter performance which is um, something we're searching to do and um, I'm sure if we do that tomorrow we'll get the job done. And you've got a couple um, players back in this week, what sort of depth does that bring to the team? Yeah, it's great to have um, Jackson Archer back um, from a foot injury. He was going real well um, and it was unfortunate to hurt his ankle, but um, he's straight back in and um, we're still missing a few to injury, but um, I'm really confident in the side we have tomorrow. Uh, your personal role, a lot of it spoken about sort of moving up the ground a little bit more, playing a bit more sort of midfield and, and forward and centre. Is that where yeah. you're more comfortable or do you, or do you prefer it inside the defensive 50? Um, I, like the, I like the versatility of it all. I, I'm, I'm loving the role I'm playing at the moment, mid forward. Um, it's still changing each week, like I went back last week and played a bit there and tomorrow might do the same. So I think having the versatility is definitely a positive for our side, but um, I'm still young, I'm still learning different um, roles and I'm not too sure where I'll settle um, long term, but yeah, I'm just trying to do whatever I can for the team. Do you have a, a preference? Do you sort of have a, a long term vision of where you'd like to, to settle and the yeah. player you'd like to become? Yeah, Clarko and I have had a constant chat about it and um, we think it is that mid-forward role long term and being able to impact the game at stoppage and then hopefully on the scoreboard as well and be involved in more scores. So um, last week I took a step forward and I'm still learning so much about that role each week. So hopefully I can keep doing that and um, lock in that spot. Disappointing for us that Colby's not out there tomorrow. How's he tracking with his recovery? Yeah, he's going real well. Um, the club said he's, he's recovering quicker than they thought, I think. Um, just a bit of stress in his foot. So decided to have another week rest um, because we had the bye as well next week so I think they took the cautious approach and um, no he's going real well Colby he's um, growing each game and um, he's a great great person to have at our club and I'm really close with him off field. You heard the name Geordie Payne around the corridors at Arden Street this week too much? I've heard a few things about mid-season next week I'm not too sure who we're going to pick up or who we're into but um, I'll leave that to Brady and the recruiting team but it, yeah it's going to be really exciting for for us to get more talent in the door and hopefully someone that can um, help us climb the ladder. What did you take out of Port Adelaide's win against Hawthorne uh, last week? The way that they were yeah. able to rally and, and come back in that final term and the way the midfielder operated in, in particular yeah. with Butters and Juan Francis in the, in the later stages of that game. Yeah, they're a very talented midfield and um, a group we're going to have to shut down tomorrow if we're going to want to win. Um, but I didn't really get to watch too much of that game because we were playing at a similar time. I saw the ending of it, which was crazy. and. Um, they're going to be coming in with a bit of confidence off the back of that, so hopefully we can start well and shut down their dangerous players. Is there a lockdown job on Butters, Rosie, Horn Francis? He got, you know, he's oh, got a few yeah, options. there's a few of them, so if you try and lock down one, I'm sure the others will step up. So don't think um, you can just focus on one player with them. That's the, that's the beauty of their midfield, but hopefully um, our midfield can match it against them, and um, I'm pretty confident we can. I think, like I mentioned um, during the week, that it's you guys in Richmond that are kind of rotating the most amount of players, as yeah. a player, does that, you know, what kind of um, impact would that have? Yeah, for sure, it's um, the more you're rotating your players, the less stability you're getting in your team, and um, we're looking for games played together and experience as a group together, so I guess the more we change the team, the less we're getting of that, which um, can impact, um, but it's also great to give um, guys like Will Dawson opportunity last week and new debutants. Um, I think we've had the most in the league along with Richmond, so it is really exciting for our young group just to explore 
what our team will look like going forward um, and giving guys opportunity. But I think going forward, I think the more stability, the better. Being a fine Tasmanian and having settled in so nicely already into AFL footy, do you think it's only a matter of time that the Devils will eventually come knocking for Colby? Um, I'm sure they'll come knocking. I hope he doesn't leave. Um, I'd, love, I'd love him to stay for as long as he can. Um, he's going real well, Colby, and um, he's from Launceston anyway, so um, it's not like he'd be coming back to Hobart. It's not like it's his home, so I've had the conversation with him, and I think he's really happy at North Melbourne. All right, and you've locked, you're locked away till 2030? Yeah. It? Yeah. Would you advise North to try and offer him a, an extended contract as well? Yeah, for sure. I want Colby to stick around for as long as possible, and I want all these boys too. Um, I think it's going to be really exciting um, when we start playing even more games together and um, start climbing the ladder. I think it's going to be a really exciting time for North Melbourne. You mentioned that the vibes still being good around the team. You, is, this, is that a tricky thing to sort of cultivate considering? You know, it, it can be. It definitely can be tricky, but I think the group that we have is so good at it and the leadership group that we have, um, it's a big focus of ours um, and we do such a good job of it and I think it's only going to help us going forward. Um, we are facing a lot of adversity now at, at the moment with um, obviously not having a great record, but I think it's just going to hold us in good stead for when we are challenging um, in the next few years and when we do face that adversity, we'll be prepared for it. And what's the key to getting that consistency across the four quarters? Yeah, it's just, um, it's buying into the structure, being mentally and physically and um, just as a group, just the teamwork, just locked in from start to finish and not having any lapses. We've had most games this year, unfortunately, the other team being able to get a, um, a lot of momentum and string a few goals together. So that's the main thing that we're focusing on shutting down is recognising those moments and um, being able to stop their momentum and change it onto our side. Last week there were a couple um, balls that might have been a bit rushed or heading into the 50, but is there kind of a um, focus this game on, on a bit more composure around the ball? Yeah, yeah, we, um, we're we always looking at our ball movement and the way we're um, using the ball and like I said before, depending on the team we're playing, um, the way they defend, um, we try and move the ball in a certain way and um, yeah, our mid forward connection, our connection to the forward line hasn't been the best um, recently but um, yeah, it's not like we're focusing too much on it, we're always trying to improve in all different facets um, and that's definitely one.